Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Dr. Eric Borsak, and I'm here on behalf of uh, C2ST, Chicago Council on Science Technology, for a nice little Q&A about paleontology and dinosaurs um, with our friend, uh, Dr. Jang Mei O'Connor, uh, from the curator uh, at the Field Museum. Uh, go ahead and give yourself a little introduction there, Jang Mei, and continue on here. Hey Chicago, uh, my name is Jingmei. Uh, I am a, a recent, uh, you know, immigrant to your city. Uh, came from Beijing, China, where I spent the last ten years working on really, really fantastic early Cretaceous fossil birds and their closest dinosaurian relatives. And I moved to Chicago in October 2020 to take a position as associate curator of fossil reptiles. I'm super stoked to be here and to get to be part of the science outreach community. Awesome. Thank you, Jang Mei. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. I, I got some questions here. I mean, I'm sure you're probably excited and you're aware that the new Jurassic World movie is coming out soon. So dinosaurs are aware, but not excited. No, I'm just I, kidding. <laughs> I, I understand. I get. I, I understand both sides of the coin. But our coin. Uh, but also, uh, prehistoric planet is that what it's called? The on Apple TV Plus with the David Ambro documentary. So it seems like dinosaurs are kind of like in in the season right now for the summer so i got some questions here like a couple of like top questions people are asking through google and i thought maybe we could just you know just riff on these for a little bit right Sounds so, good. Uh, one of the one of the top questions pretty pertinent with jurassic park uh can dinosaurs be cloned no yeah <laughs> yeah um you know it's people always ask this question and i'm always like did you see the movie like why would we want to clone them? It doesn't end well. Uh, but yeah, the thing is with ancient DNA, we know from paleo uh, anthropology studies that it really, you can't get sequenceable data beyond 2 million years. So uh, seeing as non crown bird dinosaurs go extinct 66 million years ago, uh, yeah, there's no chance to, to, to get DNA that would allow us to clone them. But if you want a dinosaur, there's plenty of dinosaurs alive and running around and, and the, those, you know, Canadian geese that, uh, you know, are around the museum here are pretty good proxies, I feel like, for for the dinosaurs that we, you know, focus on in these movies. They're pretty scary, that's what I'm trying to say. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, good point. Yeah, DNA is a very unstable, like, molecule. It does not last long. So it's impossible to clone ancient dinosaurs. Um, but there has been, like, some, you know, stirring of, like, uh, like frozen mammoths and woolly rhinoceroses from, like, Siberia that could potentially be ethically questionable, but also possible. But once again, those are a little bit more recent and much better preserved than, say, dinosaurs that we're used to digging up. Well, yeah, that's another good point. Uh, people have been trying to clone those things for decades unsuccessfully. So if you have an animal that's not even fossilized, it's extinct, but it, it was frozen, you know, and it's like 30,000 years old, it's still very cool. And even then, when you have the whole animal intact, unaltered, unfossilized, right, and you're still unable to clone it, I think it makes it really, really unlikely that you're going to be able to clone anything else. And the reason for this is because those things froze. So when, you know, like when water freezes, it expands, right? So all these cells basically expanded, they shattered. And so this really just destroys the, the the DNA and makes it really impossible for us to clone these things. But it would be cool. And, you know, yeah. who knows what new techno technological advances in the future will permit. 